Amelia Earhart, a trailblazing aviator and one of the most famous women in history, captured the world's imagination with her daring flights and her mysterious disappearance. Born on July 24, 1897, in Atchison, Kansas, Earhart was known for her adventurous spirit even from a young age. Her fascination with aviation began in her early 20s after experiencing a plane ride at an air show in Long Beach, California. Amelia's aviation career soared in the late 1920s and 1930s, a time when flying was still very much in its infancy and heavily male-dominated. She took her first flying lesson in 1921 and, within six months, managed to save enough money to buy her first plane, a second-hand Kinner Airster. Earhart's determination and passion for flying quickly earned her numerous accolades. In 1928, she became the first woman to fly as a passenger across the Atlantic Ocean, which catapulted her to international fame and effectively launched her career as a public figure and advocate for women's roles in aviation. Emboldened by her transatlantic flight, Earhart continued to push boundaries. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly solo non-stop across the Atlantic Ocean, flying from Harbour Grace, Newfoundland, to Londonderry, Northern Ireland. This achievement won her the Distinguished Flying Cross from the U.S. Congress, the first ever awarded to a woman. Throughout the 1930s, Earhart set multiple other records, including the first solo flight from Honolulu, Hawaii, to Oakland, California, and the first solo flight from Mexico City to Newark. Amelia's career was also marked by her efforts to promote aviation and opportunities for women in the field. She was instrumental in forming the 99s, an international organization for female pilots, and she wrote several best-selling books about her flying experiences, further solidifying her status as a role model. However, it was Earhart's final flight that would etch her name permanently in the annals of history. In 1937, she embarked on a bold attempt to fly around the world along the equator with navigator Fred Noonan. After completing more than two-thirds of the journey, Amelia Earhart and Noonan departed from La, New Guinea, on July 2, 1937, heading for Howland Island, a tiny speck in the vast Pacific Ocean. The final leg was to be one of the most challenging due to the difficulty in navigating to such a small target. Tragically, Earhart and Noonan never arrived at Howland Island. Their disappearance prompted an extensive sea and air search by the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard, which ultimately proved unsuccessful. The mystery of what happened to Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan has spurred countless theories and continued interest decades after their disappearance. Suggestions range from crashing into the Pacific to being captured by Japanese forces, with recent scientific efforts focusing on finding definitive wreckage or evidence on or near Nicomororo Island, where some theorize they might have crash-landed. Amelia Earhart's legacy transcends her disappearance, she remains a symbol of daring and perseverance, and her life continues to inspire adventurers and advocates for women's rights around the world. Her story is a poignant reminder of the risks inherent in pushing the boundaries of human achievement and the enduring fascination with the mysteries that remain unsolved. Disappearance over the Pacific, the most baffling aspect of her story is her disappearance during an attempt to fly around the world. Despite extensive searches, neither Earhart, her navigator Fred Noonan, nor their plane were ever conclusively found. Pre-flight photo analysis, a photograph taken in 1937 in the Marshall Islands has led some to speculate that Earhart and Noonan may have crash-landed there and were captured. The photo, allegedly showing a figure resembling Earhart, has fueled theories of their survival post-disappearance, although this remains highly controversial and is not widely accepted. The Nicomororo Hypothesis Some believe that Earhart and Noonan might have landed on Nicomororo, formerly Gardner Island, 
surviving for a time as castaways. This theory is supported by the discovery of 1930s-style objects and skeletal remains that some argue could belong to Earhart, though this has not been definitively proven. Transmission signals After her disappearance, there were numerous reported radio transmissions believed to be from Earhart, indicating that she may have been alive and calling for help after the initial disappearance. However, the credibility of these transmissions is debated. Japanese capture theory, another theory suggests that Earhart and Noonan were captured by Japanese forces, thinking they were American spies. Some argue they were taken prisoner and died in captivity. This theory has been fueled by anecdotal reports but lacks concrete evidence and is not supported by the US or Japanese governments. Post-law sightings, over the years, there have been several unverified sightings of Earhart in various locations around the world, adding an element of mystery and conspiracy to her story.